JC 24-7. It is said that some people get married because they are tired of being alone. I understand that they get divorced for the same reason. Welcome back to our series on finding the right one and joining us in set is our person I like to refer to as our resident consultant, Mona Riley Devees. Welcome. Thank you very and much. We have a panel of only gentlemen and perhaps Sister Riley is going to bring some balance where needed to our discussion. <laughs> And Joel, I think I would want to begin with you, sir. Can you maybe outline in your mind what are some of the differences between male and female? How do male or how do men differ from women? Well, basically, there's the physical makeup, which is obvious to us. I should have added it, apart from physical makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you didn't, so now that's, that's what I did. So it's, it's, that's, that's one of it. And also the internal makeup is different. Um, but in terms of characteristics, men and women think, feel, and analyze things differently. Um, women are more on the emotional side where they lend and tend to lean towards emotion. Men tend to lean towards logic. Um, so while we may think about getting from point A to point B, or when we consider what comfortable shoes she will need to wear and that kind of thing. Also in terms of um, how God made men and women. God made men with the instinct to protect and mm. supposed to be providers. Women were made to nurture and to love and to cuddle and to do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's some basic differences that we know about and also there are some differences that we may not know about that okay. as you get into relationships you find right. out oh, about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about shopping? Um, Ricky, you maybe have shopped with some women, I don't know, but um, do men shop differently from women? This man shops differently from from from, from <laughs> women. I, my, my, I can think of a real example. My mom will send me in the market, mm -hmm. and I will go by one person to get everything right there. Uh -huh. Right. Yes. So I will get like five things for hundred dollars, where, whereas a woman may get twenty things for the same hundred dollars. Okay. So yeah, I, I think men do shop differently. She may also from, take from you women. around the whole thing. Yes, yeah. yeah. she will yeah. take me around. Yeah, <laughs> all throughout the whole market, I'll meet everybody by their names and whatnot, and then get you know. <laughs> I will get into the reasons why, but one of the things um, you cited, Joel, is that women are emotional. I want to go to Mona Riley Devines. It is said that women are very moody. I don't know if you subscribe to that, but if it's a fact, is it supposed to be accepted or corrected? All right. Before I even say that, one of the things we have to understand is in terms of the brain makeup of the persons as well, because women are more right-brained, huh? hmm. so they are very intuitive. Okay, the other thing is in terms of the hormonal uh, makeup. And therefore, because of how women, God in his wonderful design, mm -hmm. creates um, women in a unique fashion. And so there are huh. certain periods in a woman's life when a woman will go through um, mood swings, etc. We talk about the premenstrual um, pre period. They go mm -hmm. through premenstrual um, symptoms. And they get very moody sometimes they don't want to have persons around them they don't want you to talk to them but yeah. although they say that they still do need that support that love etc mm -hmm. the post menopausal woman as well with the different hormone imbalance that mm -hmm. woman also goes through the phase of um moodiness you'll find she sits down and she cries for nothing <laughs> that you think mm -hmm. is nothing and what she doesn't want you to ask well Nothing is wrong with you. Why are you crying? What the man needs to do is to understand that, listen, she goes through this. What would help the woman more is for you to maybe bring her a cup of tea or just to sit with her or just to hold her hand or something. Just to feel that you are there because they go through these different things. Of course, if you find somebody that's constantly moody, hmm. clearly something's wrong because that person might have gone through some trauma or okay. something okay. earlier on, something that's subconscious that may be affecting mm -hmm. that person. So one, yes, moodiness is um, accepted because of how persons are designed. But if it's persistent moodiness, then you know something else may be triggering that. gentlemen here. Mm -hmm. How do you help them <clears throat> treat with a moody woman or a woman who is moody? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so one of the things that men need to understand, well, how men are made up basically, you see, men, tend to like to find solutions to them, yes. to things. Mm -hmm. I 
tell you, this is what I tell you how to solve it. Right. Women don't want you to tell them how to solve things. Because a lot of times they actually do know how to solve the issue. So they like being moody then? No, no. It's not that they like being <laughs> moody. Women, what men need to understand is that women like you to listen to them. They like you to show them affection. Women, women are emotional persons. Mm -hmm. They connect emotionally. Mm -hmm. And men need to understand that it's not just about providing physically. Mm -hmm. It's what's maybe more important than buying the gifts or providing the food in the house, etc. It's knowing that you are there. Mm. Because there are two emotions that drives persons in a relationship. On the woman's side, it's fear. Fear of several things. On the man's side, it's shame. Mm. And those are the two researchers shown that those are the two predominant relationships. A man who can't meet a woman's um, needs, feel the sense of shame that I'm not living up to my God-given responsibility or I'm not living up to what society expects me to live up to. A woman who feels that, listen, my, my man, my, my husband, etc., my boyfriend, etc., might feel that I'm too moody, has a sense that he might leave. And so that fear drives other aspects she of want things. that moodiness to be resolved? Of course she wants that moodiness but, to be resolved. I mean, Nobody right wants to, to think. To but, it. <laughs> right, but what I'm saying is that you don't tell her how to resolve it. You basically provide that support structure Ricky, that she Ricky, needs and it helps. You're boiling here. <laughs> tell us, tell us. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm hearing or I'm picking up that um, I don't know what I want and I want it now, right? Because in, in one end, you're saying don't tell us what to do, but in the other end, I'm, I'm hearing that um, sh she needs to get over the moodiness, mm -hmm. right? Or, or she needs to know how, how to get over it. That's, that's kind of conflicting. But she doesn't need you to tell her how to get over it. Basically, what I'm saying, Ricky, is that she needs the gentleman to be there to support. So, for instance, say, say for instance, a woman um, in the premenstrual period, okay? So you get a premenstrual syndrome. She feels nausea. She, feels, she doesn't need you to tell her, take a cup of tea or do something. She basically just needs you to be there. Simple thing means, like wash. Means, okay. Simple things mm -hmm. like, okay, mm -hmm. If you know I'm going through this, don't sit down and wait on me to cook the meal. Prepare something. Help me with it. And what needs to happen is that men need to understand that, listen, your role is more than just a provider in terms of buying things and putting it there. It's also making that connection, helping the person as, things, as, as you go along. Okay. Right? So we can go further with this. So let me go uh, more in depth with the woman itself. Uh, let's do with you, Jerome. What are some of the needs that you consider women's most important needs? based on your analysis. My analysis. When you think about a woman's needs, you think about very things. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, some go to, to the extent to say much things, <laughs> because it's too, there's too many. Too many but, needs, <laughs> okay. All right. But what I basically a woman needs, women need to be emotionally cared for. Okay. And they also need a protector. We heard this many times, the priest, the protector, that providential person. But more than that, I believe not to be relevant, the man himself have to know what type of woman he's dealing with. Because if you understand the type of woman, therefore you know basically what is her need. In order to be relevant to meet her need, therefore you have to understand what the woman wants. Okay. And how can one know what a woman wants? Therefore you have to ask. Before you jump in, Joel, I know you're going to jump in. <laughs> Wendell, you want to add to that? What are some of women's important needs? Um, well, here I fully, you know, um, outline, um, you know, in terms of being a provider, you know, a protector. Um, but I would also want to add as well, being a, a man being that, 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 that support so that the woman herself could feel knowing that once I'm with him, everything is going to be okay. Yes. You know, so. Joel, time to jump in, sir. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't want this to philosophize stuff and make it sound too big when it's just right there. Break it down, break it down. I, um, one of the basic human needs for anybody is acceptance and love. And a woman would feel so comfortable knowing that in spite of whatever happens, I might put on a little belly fat, I might put on a little bit of bulk somewhere, that he accepts me for who I am because he's in love with the inner person and not in love with how I look. And the thing is, most times... So who she is is not how she looks. It's not, it's not, it's not how it she looks. It doesn't include that. It, 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 while it <laughs> may play an integral <laughs> role, yes. It's more than that because you can't be superficial. Okay. Because today or tomorrow, your wife has a baby and she gets a little sizable. Chubby. Sizable, chubby, you know? Put on some cuteness, you know, around the hips and the belly and stuff. You can't change the fact that she's your wife. Well, you could, but you wouldn't. Mm. But you have to love her the same way. 
and, and that's the thing. It, it, it's not a connection with the physical. It's a connection with the emotional. Okay. And because men sometimes lack the emotion, which is a basic human need, we sometimes miss the mark. Would I, would I be right if I correct you? Or would my correction be justified if I were to say it's not just the physical, but it's emotional? And not to say that it's not the physical. Well, because it does include some well, part of physical. I, I, I said it plays an integral role. Okay, because men are psy yeah. creatures, you did yes, say yes, sometime yes. before, right? Yes? Yeah, I, I think um, a woman needs a man to love her as she is mm -hmm. and to be there for her and help her to become the woman God wants her to be and to be patient with her during that process, okay. right? Because if she gets... You see, if, if, if God ordained a man for her, mm -hmm. right? then ultimately the person that she has to become must include him. So if, if, if I am that man, I need to be there for her, love her as she is, at the same time working with her to help her to become the woman God wants her to be. In spite of anything. We have a woman on the inset. You know, I, I want to make a comment here because I hear things about the person putting on size, etc. One other thing, I am a female myself, but women have a responsibility. Right. to make sure that they do not use having babies as an excuse yeah. for getting out of shape. The bottom, yes, yes, yes. the bottom line is, yes, you are not going to love me. Um, love, you shouldn't be loving me less because sure. my change. Sure. But I also have a responsibility. If I love and honor you, I want to look good. And this is God's vessel. Yes. I want to make sure that I yes. eat, eat healthy I and I do exercise and I look good. I well, When I walk outside, I look good for my husband. You have children, right? Of course I do. I have two adult children. Okay. And I want to make sure that I remain in a certain shape, in a certain physical condition that complements him right. and that adds value to this vessel that God has created. You are looking at JC 24-7. Of course, if you want to leave us a comment or a question, you can use the numbers that appear on the screen or the email address. We are discussing finding the right one and we have a panel of men supported by the ever vescent um, person in that of Sister Muna Riley Devines. We're looking at the whole question of finding the right one as it relates to understanding the fairer sex, we call them. And we were talking just a while ago about the whole question of physical features. How important is that in terms of a man finding the right one? How important should that play in finding the right one? It, it, it is not the point upon which a relationship should, should be built upon, sure. right? But it is important. I must be attracted to you because I, I because how God made us mm -hmm. in terms of I'm, I'm talking about man and woman. You must be attracted, physically attracted, to um to your husband or or, or, or to your wife. Okay. It, it's not the foundational block, right. but it's an important one. Yes, you agree with that, Andrew? Well, in how the dynamics of intimacy is one therefore you have to be stimulated by sight you know to get a holistic experience in marriage so as i agree with, my, with ricky here it isn't the fundamentally should be the focus because i believe i know of instances where persons at first point they weren't attracted to, to each other by that visual experience but in getting to understand and know the person for who the person is that attraction came so i believe we must understand what love is and don't be superficial in our approach to relationships. Okay. Now, we want to go into a very, a very murky world. I say murky only because society has looked at, looked at it differently. But the Bible does say that a man is the head of the home, a husband is the head of the wife. Mm -hmm. How does that apply to you, or what do you understand by that? Wendell, husband is the head of the mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. What does that mean in today's society? Well, in context, as I said, um, husband being the head of the home, um, I think first they need to realize the meaning of the word head and, uh, you know, in, in so doing, look also at the word, um, if, if we want to use submit, right? Because being head of the home, right, the woman needs to have that. Well, tell us what head means then. Right. Mm. So that um, being the head, they need to establish, firstly, um, they need to establish what they their role and function, their responsibility, and how they would carry it out. And what that role is for Joel. But you see, um, in terms of the Bible and, and using the biblical principle, sure. the husband is the head of the home, even as Christ is the head of the church. Okay. And when you look at how Christ operates with the church, Christ was not iron fist, do as I say, or else kind of person. Okay. He was a person who taught the truth in love. Mm -hmm. 
and the husband is the head of the home in terms of he is supposed to reflect Jesus to his home. Sure. He's the type of Jesus in the home. So whatever Jesus would have done in the same principle of love and the same principle of caring and dialogue and that kind of thing, he's supposed to do that. Not saying that um, every time they're supposed to be, um, so you think we should go to church today? Mm -hmm. Or there are times when you have to, to be a risk taker, yes. We are going. Yeah. What about taking command? The, well, in quotes, taking command. In yes, quotes, it, what does that mean, sir? Mean, uh, taking command yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that you, um, that you forcefully <laughs> um, make demands. You could, you could make a command in the best, in the slightest way possible, the calmest way possible, and get it done. Okay, do it for me, please. All right, let me, yeah. <laughs> can, can, can we please go to church? Well, or can we please leave now? That's a command? And um, yeah. Oh, Ricky is saying something else, yes. Ricky, tell us. What that means to me is, is, is that the man is the head of the home in, in, in context of responsibility. Okay. Yes. At the end of the day, the box stops with me, mm -hmm. right? God has provided me with a beautiful family. Mm -hmm. I am responsible for them and especially their spiritual needs, right. right? I'm the head of the home. I'm responsible for calling family worship. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for getting my children together. I'm responsible especially for our spiritual needs. God did not run the church, or, or even in the Old Testament, God the Father did not run the church um, in the context of uh, dictatorship, mm -hmm. right? Yes, he would have said, this is, this is how I, I, I want it to be, right? But he did not run it in a dictatorial kind of way. It was out of love, right? And so, and, so if, and so if I am the head of my home, and when I become the head of my home, right? It's going to be out of love, right? And, it's, and my primary responsibility will be their salvation. Yes, we're going to bring in Sister Riley in a while. This is Riley Devines. But you want to say something, bro? I want to back up a bit because... Let's go back to creation. God, when God created man and woman, he took woman from his rib. Right. Didn't take him from... Take her from his toe or from his Achilles tendon or anything of this sort. Mm -hmm. God knows what he was doing. Right. So when a man and a woman enter into a marriage relationship, they are side by side in that. And I, I know Ricky saying that the responsibility, yes, is upon the husband as the priest of the home and that kind of thing. And while I, I don't, I don't um, dispute that, there is a, a responsibility of both persons, husband and wife, for the, mm -hmm. for the, for the um, spirituality of the family and the children. Mm -hmm. I want to look at it in light of what the book of Joel says, that God's in the last day report his spirit upon all flesh. It doesn't mean that only men... You're being very biased. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean that only men mm. would have the ability to do that, because in my family, I'll use my family as an example, <clears throat> my mother, my father is not a Christian, but my mother is the person who has been responsible over all these years. She has five sons. Five sons, and all of them go to church still. And she has been that type of person because God used her Good. In We're not disputing, and that might be an exception to the to the whole you know equation. But I'm still wondering: isn't there a time where the husband or the man of the house takes charge and says, "This is it. Regardless of how you feel, I do appreciate your concern, your opinions, but this is how we are going." Because as Ricky said, the box stops with me. Wendell. Um, I think when when we use the word command, it's all, it's often used in a negative light, right. and, and I think we need to really look at it in that sense. In the um, positive light, right? In the positive light, right? Of course. Um, but also in terms of how you now women view that command, I, I believe, and based on the experience that I have, that sometimes a woman would want you know to see that the man is command. So, for example, um, the same church as you. A man would say, well, um, we're going to Mount today. And uh, she would be okay with it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it isn't done in any forceful way, but she, he's making a stand and saying, let's go Mount today. And uh, that is it. There's no comma, there's no, you know, and she goes along with it. So it isn't anything forceful, but at the same time... Yes, yes, yes. It's, a, it's, it's interesting listening to these um, young men. Eh? Mm. Um, I just want to comment in terms of being head of the home because that's a God-ordained responsibility. And yes, society has shifted away from that because unfortunately, a lot of men have reneged on their roles. Okay. And therefore, women have had to step forward. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change God's ordained... Okay. Um, that ma a man is supposed to be the head of his home. Head in terms of providing for 
ensure the needs, physical, emotional, financial, you name it, the social needs, not just for his wife, but the entire family. The Bible already tells you any man who fails to provide for his family is worse than an infidel. Hmm. Hmm. And the Bible is very clear with that. Yeah. The Bible tells you about when you get up in the morning, you teach them um, the God's arm. So it means that bring them to the throne of grace and lead them through. That is a man's role. Now, the man has to set the tone for what happens. But remember when the two marry, you become one. So it's a partnership that right. you get in. Okay. And one of the things that couples have to look at, what are the strengths and weaknesses? So, for instance, if you have a man, yes, he said of the home, I'm not going to disrespect him. I'm not trying to undermine that. But you have a husband who is a spendthrift or a husband who unfortunately is a gambler, then it means, therefore, that the woman has, they have to make a decision and sometimes the woman have to step in and manage the funds. Otherwise, what is going to happen is that either the house, you're going to find that it gets up on auction if you're paying mortgage because the mortgage is not paid. And these are real life things that we have to look at. You see, the, the weaker person in terms of, and I'm not talking weaker sex now, I'm talking weaker in terms of I have a weakness as it relates to financial management. I'm not the sharp one. And because we complement each other. Yes. We have to, as, as we come together as one, have to learn to work together. Because some husbands will say, you know, you know I'm not good at managing the money. So you handle that, yes. right? That. You handle that. I and that's that. a shame. But it doesn't take away his role. So that might be one aspect where, listen, because I'm not very good. But it means, therefore, that as the, the wife also has a responsibility to help him to but overcome that challenge I, I must say that is, he it has. It is rather heartwarming to hear our female like yourself speaking that in this tone. I think what has happened over the years is that um, there has been an abuse of the power given to the men or the responsibility given to men and as such people are very cautious in defining or redefining the role that men must play. But the Bible is still clear. The Bible is still clear. The head of the but, no, folk, we, but our we, men in we, society we don't have we, much time but we have our to Our men to the next in section. society must take back their role. Wives, <laughs> submit yourself unto your own husband. What does that mean now? We speak about the husband. How does the whole terminology of wife submit yourself? What is the word submit here? Is, that, is it optional for a wife to submit? Is it conditional? Ricky? Yes. Jumping at this number, I want to hear You were so, you were so, you were so adamant in the other. Wives submit yourselves. Is it optional at times? No, it can't be optional because. Therefore, the husband being the head is not and optional. And I am talking either. about in the context of, of, of a Christian household, right? It, it can't be optional mm -hmm. because, because the Bible said it. What does right? submit mean? Uh, Come back, Joel, yeah. you want to answer submit. I, submit, it, tell me. Submit in the light of what the Bible is saying means to basically lend support to. It doesn't mean that you have to always um, oppose and that kind of thing. You know, the Bible talks about it better to live on the rooftop than in a house with a, a rowdy lady, right? So it means that you, you, you support in, in, and, and you you listen to what the counsel has been given once it operates within the principle of the word of God. And, and people may say there isn't a, a, um, a condition to submitting, but I will say there is. If you are being guided by the Holy Spirit and your husband is being guided by the Holy Spirit and he's using what God says, then okay, you have no reason. So let me cut you in, because, cut you in here because if the Bible, the Bible still says, husband, love your wives, mm -hmm. is there conditions for that? But it says even as, the, Good. as Christ loved the church. And the church must submit regardless of whether the, you know, whether the, the variables change as well. You are saying that there must be conditions applied to submission. But Why aren't there conditions applied to love? You must ask me when, when, when I brace the knees <laughs> back in the chair so that it will fall over you. But, but I'll, in, I'll look at it in terms of this. Um, God's promises to us, mm -hmm. in spite of if our salvation is there, it's right. there. Right. We have conditions to fulfill right. to get that salvation. Okay. But if, if submission was supposed to be for the benefit of the family, mm -hmm. it must be a good word. Well, Christ wouldn't ask you to do something that is against us. Well, that's what we say, according to how Christ But again, says. society has twisted yeah. it and made us feel that submission is such a bad thing. We have it. two minutes before we wrap and up. That's it. Christ will never do anything for, for, for us to cause, for, for us to not want to love him. Right. right? And so if, if, if as the head of the home, I am doing everything that, that God expects me to do in, in the home, whatever, there is no, re I, I wouldn't want my wife to do anything wrong. 
right? And so therefore she shouldn't have some she shouldn't have a problem with doing that's why I said in the context of a Christian home. Right. Right? She should not have a problem with, with the submission when I do what I have to do and, and, and that is lawful. Okay. Okay. Well we have to begin to wind up. I know we could not have exhausted all the discussion that we could have had on men and versus women. But I want to ask one more question to you gentlemen and perhaps Sister Riley Devins could close up. What is one thing that God expects of all women? regardless of their class, their ethnicity, or their nationality. What do you think is that one thing God expects of all women? To follow his plan for her life. What does that mean? If it means that she needs to obey him, no matter what, she, no matter what he says. Okay. If, 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 if you want, and I'm talking about the context of a man, if you want a six foot four, six pack man, mm -hmm. right? And, but that's not who God has for you, mm -hmm. then you need to follow his voice. Okay. Because at the end of the day, he really does know better. Wendell? I would say she has to fear God. Um, fear God in the sense of if God is leading in her life, then the man she is supposed to be with would be one that would follow in his footsteps. Right, so. She has to understand ideally. Based upon biblical principle, the, what submission really means. Submission isn't to be a subordinate, but it's to be a helper, help meet. So therefore, in that context, the Holy Spirit must be present. Very good. Well. Joel? Yeah. God will want every woman to be saved. And... That's a safe answer. And, and, no, that's what he will want. And that's sure that's, what, that's sure what he yes. wants. Mm. And in order for us to achieve that, in order for her to achieve that, then there are some principles that God outlined that she needs to pay attention to. And once she does that, meet, house, car, whatever she wants, God is going to give it to her. Sister Riley Devins, in your experience with women, what is that one thing that God, you would like to see exemplified mm -hmm. in all of God's women? Christ's character reflected in them. You know, the bottom line, if, if you embody love in its entirety, you wouldn't have a problem fulfilling your role as a wife mm -hmm. and a woman. And we're talking about the ability to forgive, the ability to mm -hmm. listen. The Bible talks about esteeming the other above yourself. Mm -hmm because a fundamental problem in relationships now is the whole issue of trying to gain control. I earn more money, I'm in control, I whatever. It's about that, it's about respect. Okay. And therefore, um, persons have to understand that in terms of finding the right one, it's not about how I look physically, although that's important because we need to keep the temples good. But can I love you? Can I respect you? Can I work together with you? Can I help you to maintain your role in the home as man, as the priest of the home? And can together we journey towards God's kingdom? Well, I want to thank all of you for joining us on the set. I hope you are a replica of all the other men that should have been on the set as well, right? <laughs> um, remember, the success in marriage is not just finding the right one, but it's also in being the right one. Thank you for joining us. We look forward as you join us for the ladies' version of this Finding the Right One series. See you then.